Welcome to class summit. So this is what we're going to be doing, what we saw on the thumbnail, but at the same time I still have to had to draw out my own style lines and my own designs, okay, even though I have the inspiration. So it's an asymmetric design and I had to put my paper into two for the CF and so I'm going to mark my bust line, I'm going to mark my under bust and the waist line. Okay, the length of the paper is the hip area. All right, so these are vertical measurements and we're going to be taking other measurements. So from the bust line above, I'm going to mark 1.5 inches. This is going to serve as the armhole line. All right, we have other methods that you can use to get this, but this seems to be more accurate and easier to get. So I'm going to take the neck width measurements. I use three inches, after which I'll mark my shoulder line of 7.5 inches. Now this part is, the, the shoulder drop down is one and a half inches. This is just the basic measurements in case you need a yoke at the upper part. And for the strap also, it's going to help you to get an accurate measurement for the strap. The neck depth is 3 inches, okay, so it's 3 by 3 for the neck line. Alright, this is part basic pattern which is going to help us to do alterations in order to get the design that we want. Okay, so I'm going to rule my armhole line down using the same measurement. I'll divide it into two to get the midpoint of where to curve the armhole. I'll go in by half an inch and then I'll get my curve and connect it this way, following the first measurement, which I'm going to be marking at the armhole line as well. So the next step is to get our bust fan measurements. The bust fan is going to be marked from the bust point to the length of the gown. Okay, bust, bust fan is the same as nipple to nipple measurements. In this case, we are dividing it by two. No seam allowance and then we are going to be marking it straight down. Okay, this is going to be our dart line. Now at the waist and there are the under bust, I'm going to mark 1.5 inches from the line on this part of the pattern and on this part I'm going to mark 0 0.75 okay one and a half inch this way on the left hand side as you're looking at the screen and 0 0.75 on the other side so I'm repeating the same thing at the under bust okay 1.5 and 0. 75. This is for the dart intake, and I'm going to rule everything down to the length of the gown of the blouse. So I'm not going to be copying it, I'll just take it straight down this way. If the curve is going to come from the bust point to the under bust, so I'm going to use my French curve like so. I'm going to place it this way as you're seeing on the screen. So connect to the under post. Okay. And then I'll connect the other part as well to the under post. This is our under post tightening. Now the next step is to get our horizontal measurements. The post divided by four. And we're going to be marking, there's no dart intake at the bust point or the bust line. Now this, I'm going to repeat the same thing on the armhole line. This particular design or blouse I'm making, I'm not going to be snatching it much because I'm using the zipper at the back. Now if you're not using zipper at the back, you can minus about 2 inches from your actual measurements. And that will serve as the cinching at the waistline, not at the under bust, at the waistline. Okay, so whatever we take, we add it back. Whatever we take from the that intake after taking our bust 
our waist measurement divided by 4, we add back the dart. Okay, the same thing applies to the hip. The hip of 43, we mark 43 divided by 4. And then whatever it is that we take at the dart, we extend it back, which is what we did in all the other measurements. I hope this makes sense to you. Okay, so we're going to be connecting the lines. You can see that some of the lines are not looking so beautiful and curvy, right? That's because of it is the shape that we have. Okay, your own shape might be different from this, right? So we're going to connect to the hip line from the waistline using this curve. If you've watched to this part, please kindly subscribe to this channel and um, watch to the end to get the best part of it. I'm going to take my bust dart, which is the difference between the back half length and the front half length. Here I'm using 1.2 inches. Okay, this is my bust dart. Now we are done with the under bust and waist tightening. Okay. So going over to the upper bust. Now measure my bust to under bust, and that is what I will use to mark from bust line to the above the bust line, which is going to serve as upper bust tightening. Okay, you can choose to place this anywhere you want. It must not be that. So I'll get the midpoint of the shoulder, and I'll connect a straight line to the bust point. This is going to serve as the line where my over post tightening is going to be. Okay, so at the over post in between the lines, I'm going to be marking 0 0.75 on both sides. 0 0.75 on both sides, that's to the quarter of an inch. And I'm going to rule a straight line connecting it to the post point. I'll connect it as well to the post point. Okay. I'll raise that up by 0 0.25, raise it up by 0 0.25 like I did, so it matches up with the other parts. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, so we are making progress. Like if you've not subscribed to this channel, please kindly do so. And I hope you gain value for what you're watching. Now I'm going to open this pattern up, like I said before, and close the pause that. Okay, I open the pattern up, that is after tracing out the markings to appear on the other side. I'll close the pause that and transfer it to the waist that like, like you have seen. <laughs> okay, so once I do that, I will now go over to the upper bust and close the dart as well. Okay, that is because I've opened the waist dart down to the bust point. So I'll be able to close the upper over bust dart. Closing this dart will make it easier for me to draw out my own asymmetric over bust design. Okay, so in this, I drew out my own design, which is asymmetric at the upper part. And that is why I have to close the that in order for me to be able to draw out my designs. I hope this is making sense to you. Okay, so I'm going to draw it out now and you will see the outcome. Of course, we're going to do this together. All right. So, like I said, I've used pencil to mark it out so that I'll be able to get the right shape. Then I'll use my marker to highlight it. You can do this. Use your own measurement to mark out the, your own style, right? You can draw out your own style and mark out exactly the way you want it. So, this is what I want. And I'm going to be opening the dart and then cut it out. So closing it like this will make it easier for it to match up together, right? It will be easier for it to match up together without any part being looking different from the other. Okay, so now it's time to cut away the dart intake.
Remember, we've added them to our measurements. So I'm just going to cut it away like so and like so. See how beautiful it is. So beautiful and easy. So I'll put them together at the waistline. Make sure the waistline matches so that we'll be able to draw out the style lines at the hemline as well. So we've just finished with the upper bust. We are going over to the under bust and the asymmetric design. So you can see I added extra paper because I wanted it to be long, about three inches. It depends on how the length of the blouse I want. So from the waistline, I'm going to mark four inches down. That is where my run asymmetric design is going to be starting. So I will use the curve. I'm following the illustration that I have made. So I will use the curve and trace the illustration and trace the design that I want to create. Okay, so this is one part and then I'm going to trace the other part and continue. Okay. So, like I said, if you've not subscribed to this channel, please kindly do so and subscribe. Alright, so you're free to mark out any skyline that you want. You just have to do it this way. If it's not going to be asymmetric, you can use half of your pattern to get the design that you want. So, you can see the way I place the curve. In order to get what I the shape that I want, like I said, if your design is symmetric, you don't have to do this. One part of the pattern that you drafted is enough to give you what you want. So cut it and cut it and cut it. Okay, so this is the back. The back is just a basic bodice, a basic bodice. I only did a small cinching at the waistline so instead of marking 30 divided by 4 i used 29 inches i don't want this to be tight and that is because i'm using a zipper i don't want the zipper to spoil i cannot trust nigerian zippers okay so i'll measure the measure the 29 inches divided by 4 and then i will add the one inch that intake back to the measurement I'll take my measurements at the hip and then I'll connect them this way. I hope this is making sense to you. Okay, so I'll get my ruler and connect the lines like so. So, like I said, please subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up, share it, and we'll continue to make progress so I'll cut everything out now now for the the neck depth at the back I'm going to go up by two inches from the armhole line it's not a must that the front and back um, neck depth is going to be on the same line you can choose how you want the back to be either high or low so for the back tightening I did 0.25 on both sides of this line, the dart line, and I'll connect it to the dart legs. I'm trying to find a perfect uh, line to connect, okay? So all I have to do now is to just cut it out and we will be good to go. So at the CB, I'm going to go down from by half an inch to connect the neck line so that it doesn't look all high at the back. Okay, so the next thing is to cut everything out. We've done a good job. We have done a good job. So cut it out and we'll see other alterations. Now remember that this front side have been altered. So it's not going to be matching with the back side. So we are going to alter the side of the back. So for this side, I'm going to mark where the front side is stopping i'll mark the same thing at the back right so that i can slant it from there and then i'll turn this paper and mark on the other side okay 
I'll turn it and mark on the other side where the side is going to be meeting up. You can actually do this on different um, papers, but I just choose not to waste any more paper. Okay, so I will draw the lines now. I'll draw out the lines that we have two lines, one for the right hand side and one for the left hand side. If this video is making sense to you, please give it a thumbs up, like it, share it, and we'll make, continue to make progress. So I'll cut the lower part, which is the part that I'm going to cut away first, cut it on the fabric, and then cut away the other part and also cut on the fabric. When cutting this on your fabric, you just have to be very careful so you don't mix things up. So cut away now and the next process is to transfer all those dots. Don't forget to place markings on your pattern so you don't forget what and what you need to do. So I'll put this together and in the next video we'll do the sewing. Thank you for watching. Bye.